Peter Beverly Chamber of Commerce. And I'm very grateful to have all of you joining us this morning. Um, I am on a, a journey of knowledge with regard to the Office of Consumer Affairs. I'm, I'm on a journey with regard to the, um, the knowledge, finding out more about what the Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulation does. This affects both consumers and businesses every day of our lives, but it's one of those uh, divisions that we never think about because things just happen. So I am, I am very grateful um, to our panelists today, which will be introduced in just a minute. I also want to thank uh, the Cape Ann Chamber of Commerce and the North of Boston Visitor and Convention Bureau for joining us today and collaborating. This is actually started as part of our Government Affairs Committee here at the Greater Beverly Chamber of Commerce. And this is something mm -hmm. that we're extremely interested in to find out more about and to partner with the state on, on uh, an educational forum. I want to remind everyone that this event is being recorded and it's on Facebook Live and Zoom, and we will release the recording as soon as it is available immediately following uh, this event. So we also want to encourage everyone to ask questions. Uh, no questions should be left uh, unturned, if you will. We want to hear from everyone what your thoughts are about regulations or business scams, whatever comes to mind. So this is, should be an engaging and active discussion with our panelists. So I'm going to turn it over right now to uh, Ed Pileski, who is the undersecretary and a good friend, oh, by the way, uh, from the Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulation. Ed and I have known each other for, I don't know, probably eons at this point, and he is just a wonderful resource to all of us. So, Ed, over to you. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, thanks for that beautiful introduction, as always. Uh, again, again, good morning, everyone. My name is Ed Pileski, and I'm the Undersecretary of the Massachusetts Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulation, or OCABRA, as we like to call it. And I'd like to start by thanking our moderator, Leslie Gould, and uh, the Greater Beverly Chamber of Commerce for her organization's partnership and support. Uh, I'd also like to thank and recognize uh, our other partners for today's event, uh, Ken Reel, the Executive Director of the Cape Ann Chamber of Commerce, and someone I've known for uh, a while now, Henry Casey, the Executive Director of the North of Boston Convention and Visitors Bureau. So thank you guys so much. Um, as a North Shore resident myself, I know the value of your organizations, uh, folks out there, uh, and, and what they bring to the region, and want to say that it's a great pl pleasure to work with you all. Uh, I've been active in Chambers of Commerce over the years uh, and worked very closely with Leslie uh, at the when she was head of the Linary Chamber of Commerce many moons ago, and uh, I'm currently active, uh, somewhat active in the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce now. Uh, over the past year, actually. Uh, I participated along with Leslie uh, in a weekly call with my boss, the Secretary of Housing and Economic Development, Mike Keneally, and the Secretary of Labor and Workforce, Workforce Development, Rosalind Acosta, uh, Chambers of Commerce representatives and business community members from throughout the Commonwealth to discuss pandemic related concerns, such as labor issues, um, uh, impact on industry, available, available federal grant resources like the PPP, uh, and state government support, such as uh, Mass Growth Capital Grants, which is part of uh, our secretariat at uh, EOHED. And personally, I've always felt that your businesses are the lifeblood of our local economy. Uh, and you should know that we are all rooting for your success as we approach the end of the state of, of emergency next week. The Baker Polito administration is also doing what they can to support you with promotional campaigns and funding opportunities. In fact, over Memorial Day, over, over the Memorial Day weekend, the administration launched the Let's Go, Out, Let's Go Out campaign to support local restaurants and encourage in-person dining. Yay, right? So this promotion is an effort to raise public awareness for an industry hit particularly hard by the pandemic. The $1.9 million campaign is being led by the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism in conjunction with the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development and industry partners. The mission of the campaign is to amplify restaurants as a driver of our way of life in Massachusetts as life returns to normal. It's scheduled to run through the summer. Let's go out as an extension of the administration's My Local Mass campaign that has been encouraging residents to shop, dine, and stay local since August. You can find out more at visitma.com backslash let's go out. 
There you will also find a directory of restaurants. And if your restaurant is not listed, you can visit the site and create a free account to be added to the list. And be on the lookout for a new program from Mass Growth Capital Corporation. The organization has an, the, the organization that administered 700 million in small business relief program for the administration. This new grant program will help socially and economically disadvantaged small business owners access tools and services to develop their digital capabilities, such as online marketing, social media advertising, and point of sale systems and technology. And Mass Growth Capital Corporation's website is empoweringsmallbusiness.org. We wish all the wonderful restaurants in Beverly, and I know a lot of them very well, and throughout the North Shore and all businesses, the very best of luck this summer and beyond. Before we go, before we go any further, I'd like to, to thank my co-panelists and Okara colleagues for being here today. Layla D'Amelia, the Commissioner of the Division of Professional Licensure, and James Cassidy, the Director of the Division of Standards, and I'll introduce them both um, momentarily. Now, the goal of the Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulation is to empower consumers through advocacy, community outreach, and educational programs while ensuring a fair and competitive marketplace for the businesses our agencies regulate. In advancing our mission, OCABRA continually strives to find a balance between protecting consumer rights and supporting business vitality here in the Commonwealth. It's exciting to be here with you today to talk about protecting your business and your customers. These are things that we at OCABRA feel are very important. So a little bit about OCABRA. We oversee and support five regulatory agencies, including the Division of Banks, which examines state chartered banks and credit unions, the Division of Insurance, which administers the Commonwealth's laws pertaining to the protection of the insurance consumer through the regulation of the insurance industry, the Division of Professional Licensure, which through its boards and offices regulates more than 580,000 individuals, businesses, and schools to engage in over 150 trades and professions in Massachusetts. And I'm not gonna get uh, too deeply involved in that one because the commissioner we have, uh, we're lucky to have uh, here with us today. Uh, the Division of Standards, which, is, which enforces accuracy requirements and other standards relating to weighing and measuring devices and their use in the sale of food, fuels, and other products. And similarly, we have uh, Jimmy Cassidy with us today from the DOS who will, um, who will uh, do a much better job than I will um, about explaining his uh, terrific agency. And then finally, and last but not least, certainly, um, we oversee and support the Department of Telecommunications and Cable. DTC oversees the telecommunications and cable industries here in Massachusetts, working to ensure that residents receive high quality communications services at just and reasonable prices, uh, re reasonable rates while promoting sustainable competition in the communications marketplace. Now, additionally, we manage a few core programs at the Executive Office of Consumer Affairs, including the Home Improvement Contractor Program, HIC program, and its associated arbitration program and the Guarantee Fund program, the state's lemon laws and data breach notification requirements. We also operate a consumer hotline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And you can call us anytime during that period at 617-973-8787 with any consumer questions. And I believe we'll have uh, our website and hotline number available uh, for this audience. So um, again, feel free to contact us anytime. Um, once again, OCABRA protects and empowers consumers through advocacy and education and ensures a fair playing field for, for the mass businesses its agencies regulate. And again, we're just so happy to be here with you all. So without any further ado, I'd just like to first introduce our terrific commissioner of the Division of Professional Licensure, Layla D'Amelia. The commissioner joined us about 15 months ago, just before the pandemic hit. Prior to her current role, Layla served as a senior member of the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. She previously served as the Deputy Director for Policy and Boards at the DPL. And we're, we're so very happy to welcome her back uh, to uh, be with us. 
and uh, we truly value her subject matter expertise. In addition to her leadership skills, Layla is an accomplished attorney who has had a successful career in both government and in the private sector. Layla is a tireless advocate of licensees across the Commonwealth. And again, we're so lucky to have her. So Layla, it's great. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us. So um, please uh, give us some uh, remarks about DP DPL. Everybody, I am um, myself a licensee of a different sort of agency, the BDO, so I understand what licensure can mean for folks in their own lives. So it's super important to me um, that our customer service and our consumer protection uh, mission, the dual mission of our agency, is uh, adhered to um, as well. So you know, just a little bit about the division. We are sort of a shared service model. Uh, state agency where we oversee uh, 39 boards of registration currently, and it's sort of a dotted line to these boards. So we staff them with lawyers. We're predominantly lots of lawyers at DPL um, with administrators, lawyers, and we also have um, in 2017, we merged with another state agency. So now we have the Office of Public Safety Inspections, which has also a public safety licensing arm, but also inspectional services for the elevator division and our state building and engineering um, inspector divisions. So it's quite a large agency with 50 employees. Um, and part of what sort of drives us is to make sure that folks in their profession, so it goes from uh, you know, electricians to plumbers to massage therapists to psychologists. So it's a whole swath of professional licensing, as well as public safety, construction supervisor licenses, hoisting licenses, um, S licenses, um, the Mass State Athletic Commission um, is also, so MMA fighting and boxing in the state is also regulated through DPL and the Office of Public Safety Inspection. So it's a really large uh, swath of professional licensing that we oversee. And we really rely on our boards who are the experts in their industry to regulate and set up rules uh, for professionals to adhere to. And those rules will then set a standard of practice in the Commonwealth that then consumers can make sure by, you know, they can look up to make sure someone has a license on our public facing website. Um, and so it, it, and if they have a problem with somebody um, that is a licensee on our public facing website, you can actually file a complaint online or you can download the application. And we do have some consumers who prefer to have a paper application and, and write it out and snail mail it in. I will say the last time I was at the division, we were not online and everything was paper driven and we are still have a lot of paper that we have to still pull through, but we have gone online. So the five years I was gone, they are now online. And thankfully that is a, a, a reality because of the first, I think the second day of this job, we were all sent home. And if we were not online, I think it would have created a really um, a bee's nest for us um, because again, the snail, mail would have gone into the office and we weren't in the office. So um, again, I don't want to talk too long, but you know, we're here to sort of set up standards of practice for a whole host of uh, professional licensing and um, help the consumer constituent and the professionals understand what their ro role is in, in the Commonwealth um, under a licensing standard. And I think, um, am I supposed to, to, to let Director Cassidy is next yeah. up. I think I'm Thank you. To... Thank you, Commissioner. I, 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 I want to introduce Jimmy. I gave you such a great introduction. I have to um, I have to repeat that from my friend James here. So again, um, we welcome Director Jimmy Cassidy, the Director of the Division of Standards. Jimmy joined Ocabra almost three years ago, a little bit before I did, uh, coming on board. Um, he joined us from the city of Cambridge, where he was the former sealer of weights and measures. Jimmy has more than two decades of experience with weights and measures and a cumulative 34 years of local government experience. He served as chairman for the National Conference on Weights and Measures, 
He is highly respected within state and national weights and measure organizations for his subject matter expertise in leadership. Uh, and he too is a tireless advocate um, of licensees across the Commonwealth. And we're really lucky to have someone of uh, both uh, Commissioner D'Amelia and uh, Director Cassidy's uh, caliber uh, professionals working for Ocabra. I can't say enough, enough about them. We're just uh, thrilled to have them both on our team. So Jimmy, uh, why don't you take it away? Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Uh, and thank you, Leslie. And I want to thank everyone for allowing me to participate in this today. Uh, this is a, a great event. Um, I, as Ed said, I have been in the weights and measures field for 20 plus years, coming to the division in 2018, in December of 2018. Uh, and coming in in, de in December of 2018, uh, we realized that, uh, you know, fresh eyes, looking at what's going on in front of us. Um, I had some thoughts, some visions. Um, Ed came in a couple of months later and, uh, and he's been a partner that uh, it's been incredible to work with. Uh, as we look at the modernization of standards, as we've been calling it, uh, as Layla had said earlier, when it came to DPL, uh, on the online process, um, division of standards was everything was paper. Um, I'll even go one step further, and Ed didn't believe me until he got a bit, he got a chance to visit us at at uh, one Ashford and seen that licenses were still being typed on typewriters, um, and, and and we went through that and. Uh, we have been growing ever since. Uh, we are still in year number uh, two of our new online licensing process. Uh, we do license 10 different licenses. Uh, we are the folks that um, license your motor fuel, uh, either be lubricating or gasoline. So all stations across the Commonwealth need to uh, license with us. Also, we are the folks that license uh, auto body locations. Um, across the Commonwealth, as well as glass. That's a three-year license that we are also looking and we deal with. Uh, we are uh, auctioneers. Auctioneers are a license with us at the Division of Standards. Uh, we have a couple of other, that we're, it's called a hawker peddler. Um, the, that license there, what I try to explain to a lot of people is now, when you're seeing the, the big boom is food trucks. Everywhere you see a food truck on a corner and they are collecting uh, money, uh, they have to have one of those licenses. They have to have a hawker pedal license with the Commonwealth, and that's with the division standards also. Uh, we are entrusted with uh, the item pricing and scandal waiver law, uh, which is basically um, businesses have the opportunity to apply with the division of standards for a waiver. Uh, it, on, instead of item pricing every item in all of their stores that they have to give a different size shelf tag, follow some stricter guidances. Um, so we, we offer that also at the Division of Standards. Uh, one of our big parts at the Division is weights and measures. Uh, we oversee 107 under 5,000 communities and we also have another 67 contracts with other municipalities uh, when it comes to weights and measures. Uh, weights and measures has been my passion since uh, when I got involved with it back in 1998 when I went to work for the city of Cambridge uh, in the weights and measures division. Um, I had some great opportunities there to meet some people across the Commonwealth as, as well as across the nation uh, and seeing their passion when it comes to weights and measures. Uh, how I, uh, when I've spoken to many of the national groups, um, always try to put it in the, in the, in the statement of weights and measures touches you uh, from the time you wake up in the morning to the time you go to bed at night, thousands of times. So when, when you think about when you are going to brush your teeth in the morning, you pick up that toothpaste that is packaged and labeled, uh, weights and measures oversees that. The coffee that you drink, the taxi cab ride you might take, your Uber that is also now regulated through weights and measures. You know, these are the items there. The gasoline that you're buying at, at, at your neighborhood gas station. Um, you're, if you're heating your home with home heating fuel, 
DOS is, instru is inspecting in with our local partners. And, and when we talk local partners uh, up in the Beverly area, you know, we have Bob Savinelli, who's one of our local partners up there. And I thank Bob for what he does every day to keep Beverly you know, on the, on the straight and narrow path when it comes to weights and measures, making sure the consumers and businesses are treated fairly up there. Uh, we look at all of these different devices, propane. Propane is being delivered to your home, to, to a business. We, we're, DOS is also in, is inspecting all of those trucks there. Uh, we, we, when you look at weights and measures, um, and we, we go from scale systems in all of your markets to landfills with truck scales. Uh, you know, we, we are a little bit of everything that is out there. Um, I, I consider DOS, and, and this is my impartial, this is being one of uh, state agencies' hidden jewels. Uh, we are a small state agency, but we touch every consumer and every business across the Commonwealth on a daily basis. A lot of our people are, we work, are behind the scenes. We are there to make sure you as a consumer are treated fairly. And we, it's all, we try to make it in a seamless manner uh, that when you're going in and purchasing whatever you're doing, uh, that is A, it's being sold by net weight. Uh, we are working with um, DOS compliance officers and also with our local partners uh, to make sure that, you know, procedures are, are in place in all of these businesses. Uh, you know, we are looking at this all. Uh, we are here to make sure that the businesses have a level playing field. You know, th this is the, the ultimate goal. When we talk weights and measures, it's always been making sure that equity is in the marketplace. And that is to make sure consumers are treated fairly and that every business is being treated fairly. Um, you know, the, the agency, we are continuing to grow. Um, and no pun intended, the cannabis is one of our newest uh, items that we're seeing on a daily basis um, because all of this is being weighed and measured. So we are working with the Cannabis Commission and every business across the Commonwealth to make sure that accuracy is number one. Uh, but that is pretty much an overview of who we are and what we are, Leslie, and I thank you for this time. No problem, my pleasure. Let's get right into the, the questions. You guys ready to go? Ed, Layla, right? So one of the, th and that was a great overview from all of you and I'm very grateful because like I said, on this journey, I've been learning so much. One of the things that we always hear from businesses, especially through the chambers or the North of Boston Convention Visitor Bureau, you know, our businesses are over-regulated. How do you answer to that? Like, how, what, you know, it, it was always, oh, the state, the state, the state. Do you ever feel like you're the, um, you know, the elephant in the room, the dark cloud? You know, how do you turn that around and say, no, we're not over-regulating you? Anyone? Well, and do you I want to... Our... Go ahead. Jimmy, go ahead. Jimmy, go ahead. All I was going to say, Leslie, is that I truly feel that we're not over-regulating, um, <laughs> that, you know, we are here for a purpose. Um, that, you know, as I said earlier, that uh, we want to make sure businesses are doing things the right way, uh, that they're being uh, equal to each other, uh, that we're making sure that there is a level playing field, uh, and that consumers are being protected, uh, because not every business is going to be on their best behavior every day. Um, but I will say that 99% of the folks that we're dealing with uh, want to be regulated, want to do things right. Uh, and that I truly feel that we're not over-regulating. Uh, we, we are here for a purpose. Yeah, With I, everything, oh, sorry, Ed, go ahead. No, I, I would say as a general, um, kind of a general rule, the, the Baker Leto administration, and one of the f first things that Governor Baker did when he was elected the first time around was to kind of put a freeze on all um, uh, existing, uh, I'm sorry, all new um, regulation and kind of a top to bottom analyzation of um, all current regulation. And so that kind of set the tone, I think, for the administration. I think what these two folks represent here, is, and again, we know the delicate balance between regulating, protecting the public and allowing these business to, businesses and licensees to do what they do best and run their businesses, especially, you know, uh, 
you know, what they dealt with throughout the pandemic. But I, I think that um, the way that uh, these two folks approach their agencies, I know it's kind of like smart regulation. They try to do everything, um, again, with the focus of protecting the consumer, but not, you know, kind of over-regulating. The very, the, they work, these, these people work with our licensees. They work with businesses. Um, the day-to-day -day, uh, things that they do to help, um, uh, you know, individuals and businesses, um, you know, obtain licensure so that they can, you know, again, go about their business. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's really an effective process. And again, I think it's always um, keeping in mind, you know, not to come down on businesses to the point where, you know, we're affecting um, how they do business. They're always um, willing to work with people and do absolutely everything they can to try to get them, you know, up and running as quickly as possible. So that, that's kind of just a general overview of how I think the administration feels about regulation. There is a place for it. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's very, it's a very delicate balance. And I think our, our um, folks do a pretty good job at that. No, and I appreciate that. And just listening to all that you, uh, all of you have to regulate, deal with, if you will. Uh, I mean, that's enough to keep you up at night as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so I, I'm very grateful and I'm respectful of your positions. How do you accomplish it though? I mean, you're not just one person. How many people really, I'm, I'm curious to know so that the business um, owners on this call can know and the consumers on this call could know, how do you actually be, create an efficient system? How many people do you have working for you going out? I mean, you're just not, not the three of you aren't going out to hundreds of thousands of businesses. That That's not how it can work. How, how do you make it happen? Well, well, these guys um, both have um, a, a core group, um, great, great teams. I'll let Layla. Why don't you talk a little bit about um, your inspectors and and um, and how that process works? I mean, Ocabra in, in general, we have about six hundred employees all told. Um, the DPL is probably our largest agency, um, and Layla does a great job leading that. So, Commissioner, maybe you could talk a little bit about that process. Layla, I think you're muted. Layla, muted. Nope, can't hear her. Jim, do you want to answer while she tries to? Sure. I mean, you really have quite a lot on your plate. Well, and, and I, I will say at, at DOS, we are probably one of the smallest agency Ed has under, under his umbrella. Uh, we have, well, we had 17, uh, we just hired a new supervisor that just started yesterday. Um, we have 17 employees and we'll be hiring another one very shortly uh, to be working at our metrology lab. And I, I do want to also uh, kind of, we, we have uh, a field supervisor that's going to be looking over our compliance group. Uh, our compliance group is 10 compliance officers that are across the Commonwealth uh, from the Berkshires to the Cape and the Islands. Uh, but we also have local partners. Uh, some of our cities and towns have uh, a sealer of weights and measures or, a, or an inspector in place. Uh, but what we are entrusted with with that is making sure that all of those local folks as well as my folks are standardized trained uh, in understanding the weights and measures aspects, seeing what's going on. Uh, we do have a metrology lab. Presently, we're in Needham, uh, where I am today, uh, but we're going to be moving in uh, out to Ashland uh, in the middle of August. Uh, so you know, DOS is, is moving out there. We're expanding, adding another employee uh, to the laboratory. Uh, we look at and make sure that all standards, and when I say by standards, are testing equipment that would be for um, testing of gasoline that a local inspector or my inspectors would have uh, are calibrated here at, at this laboratory here, as well as all the weights that they're used to, to calibrate and test scales. Um, and we also, at this laboratory, we test the uh, antifreeze that is sold across the Commonwealth uh, to make sure that it passes a freeze test. 
Um, you know, so I'm, I'm very lucky for a small agency that I have. I've got great people uh, that are working with me. Uh, as you say, you know, sleepless nights. Yeah, we've all had that. Um, my gray hair is not there because I shave it off every day. So, you know, that's how we work on that in, in, in my household. But uh, that, that's what we are at DOS. Layla? Still can't hear her. We still yeah. can't hear her. Oh no. Okay. Listen, I, let's talk about the consumer because they're the other part of this equation. This is that level playing field. This is where we have to balance things, right? It's the consumer is just as important as the business. How do you protect the consumers? Ed? Okay. So we, um, we do all kinds of consumer uh, forums such as this one. We have, um, we're very active. Um, uh, on social media, we're, we're um, constantly partnering with organizations like the Better Business Bureau, AARP, again, chambers, different, um, different um, events throughout the community uh, throughout the year. And, and really, um, our uh, mission is, again, advocacy and education. You know, we don't really have, um, we don't have, um, you know, the, the teeth that the Attorney General's office has in terms of enforcement. But what we do have is we have kind of the bully pulpit. We, we do have the ability to uh, educate the consumer and we try to do that um, on a daily basis. So, you know, I think um, it, it's really, um, you know, the entire kind of, um, the, the, the entire reality is really one step forward, three steps back in terms of, um, you know, education, um, uh, and, and awareness um, for consumers about the various scams that are out there. It's really, it's really endless, and it's just a, it's it's a constant battle. And what really is needed is a, a constant dialogue, constant communication with groups like this, um, and and people really talking to each other, protecting each other, and um, and staying again one step ahead of the scammers, the fraudsters, and the criminals, as we like to say. Um, there are, there are many of them, um, you know, really kind of too numerous to mention, um, but I'll just get into a couple. Um, the division of banks is in the process of, uh, um, working with the legislature. There was a money transmitter bill that was filed. It's a top division of banks priority. Uh, it's, uh, intended to regulate the payment apps like Venmo. Uh, it's, it's a consumer protection bill. Uh, all states except for Montana currently uh, regulate cash transmitters and, and uh, currently Massachusetts only has regulations or law for foreign transactions. So if you think about this for a minute, literally that's international uh, money transfers. And uh, you know we currently have nothing that protects um, uh, transactions on pay online payment apps for uh, a transaction, um, you know, uh, for uh, to, to to pay someone uh, in Florida, for example, where my son where my son happens, my younger son happens to live. So we regulate international stuff, but we can't we don't even do it here uh, domestically. So um, this legislation would allow, for example, the division of banks to examine these companies. We're hopeful that this is going to go through. And um, in the meantime, uh, I know Venmo and app payment apps like that are extremely popular, uh, even in my own family. Um, and uh, it, it's, uh, it, it certainly is a great technology used by many, but just be careful. We've heard many stories about some of those payments going into the ether and, and never being received. So um, just be very careful, uh, always checking um, your bank statements and, and the payment app. And in the meantime, you know, consider alternatives. There's a, there's a payment app called Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, which is a bank-to-bank -bank, um, um, app. So um, that's just kind of one example. Leslie, I don't know if you want to get into uh, others, but if you have another question, I want to certainly make time for that. But that's, um, you know, that's a hot one. And, uh, and again, there are others. But the, the, the key is, again, it's communication dialogue staying one step ahead of the scammers, fraudsters, and criminals. It really is a daily battle because they're everywhere. Why don't you give us one more, and then I'd love to hear from Layla if she got her the sound all set as well. So give us one more scam that we really need to watch out for, whether business or consumer, because it's a frightening world we live in. I mean, technology, I mean, you know, 
every decade, right? Every era has something to watch out for, but this is a little more, ins to me, this is insidious because you can't see it happening until it does. Right. So um, generally speaking, there's kind of a group of, um, th there's one good one that I think everybody just needs to be on their toes about um, for um, friends, family members, particularly older folks um, in, in, in your family. Uh, and really any of us, it's, uh, you know, we're all in this together. I like to say that all the time. We're all in this fight together, but the government imposter scams are particularly insidious, as you say, Leslie, because they, um, uh, again, again, they basically reach out to unsuspecting victims, consumers, pretending to be a reliable government organization like Medicare, like the IRS during tax season, like uh, the CDC during the pandemic where people are just scared and vulnerable and, and you know, thirsting for information, social security. Um, basically all these reliable governmental organizations, um, they're not going to contact you, for example, they're not gonna, social security is not gonna contact you to notify you that, that your social security number has been canceled. Um, uh, Medicare will not, will not contact you to ask you to verify your Medicare number and so on and so on. These are all um, phishing attempts. These are all attempts to get your personal financial information. In the end, that is what this is all about. So it really is a matter of staying vigilant, again, talking to your friends, neighbors, family members, and again, particularly older folks uh, who may be uh, at home a little bit more. Um, well, a lot of people have been home during the pandemic. So um, again, but it, it, it's all of us. Um, you know, I've uh, at times, um, you know, received text messages and, uh, you know, some of these spoofing technologies that are used. Um, a lot of these um, texts appear to be from reliable, reliable uh, organizations like this. So you have to be careful not to click on links, live links that could, um, you know, infect your device or your computer with malware. Um, you just have to resist that urge and, 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 and you know, contact the, the organization or if it's a private company trying to sell you something, contact those uh, organizations directly. A lot of these um, links have very recognizable, uh, you know, spoofing technology where the link, the website, everything looks very familiar, even the logos that, that, that are used in some of this stuff. And it might, uh, the link might, might be one letter off from uh, Social Security, Medicare, or some private company. But when you click on that link, uh, again, danger uh, it occurs. So um, again, stay vigilant, be careful, and um, you, you really just have to talk to each other and share these stories about, uh, that's how you learn about what's going on. Um, that's great advice, Ed, excellent advice. I wanna remind everyone too that um, please, if you have a question for one of the panelists, put it in the chat. We, we are monitoring that. so. So please uh, feel free. If not, I'm just going to keep going with the questions as well. But Layla, would love to hear from you if your sound is good. Um, we got a. I, I have kind of a two-part question. Um, one is um, the businesses, right? So you're in charge of all the licensing for the businesses, and I know every chamber of commerce has, you know, probably hundreds of businesses that get licenses from from your division of the agency. Um, what's their biggest, uh, what do they struggle with the most? If you, if that's a question that you can answer, because, you know, it's like they want, they want to make sure that they're successful. So what are, what are their biggest challenges? And then how do you pr protect the consumer on the flip side of it? So first, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I, I logged in and logged back up, like out and in. So I'm not going to touch my mute button right now. <laughs> so yes, we license establishments. Um, sort of across the board, whether it's a chiropractic establishment, a salon, um, just sort of physical therapy establishment, real estate, CPA businesses. Um, so yeah, across the board, sort of differently, I think they all struggle sort of with their, the same thing sometimes underlying, we, we, we require underlying business licenses uh, as part of the application packets. Um, I will say, because we're, we are emerging from COVID, I mean, I think the last 15 month struggle has been COVID. I mean, at the end of the day, we're looking at, you know, facing and um, masking and PPE. And when the, when the group of establishments that were then allowed to open on June 8th, so sort of just a little backtrack, we have the functional 
units are, we have a compliance unit that then goes out and does unannounced compliance checks to a whole host of, you know, the businesses I just mentioned. And we make sure they're following, whether it's sanitation rules underneath their regulatory scheme, um, licenses are posted, and whatever it is that that business uh, regulatory scheme requires, we have compliance officers who then go and do those compliance checks. And through, a, through COVID, it's added another layer. And so a lot of what we did, and I will tell you, you know, like uh, Director Caskey said, 95% of our licensees are actually, you know, they abide by both the rules and under COVID, we did a lot of education and we worked with our partners in state government. Uh, everyone was abiding by the COVID rules, at, you know, really wanting to get open and then be safe, and which is, again, uh, a consumer protection issue for us to make sure that folks who are seeking those services are seeking them in a safe manner. Um, so at the end of the day, I think, you know, we try to do our best to be as quick in a business license when they when it comes in. Some require a check before you open. So if you are open a salon or a massage therapy establishment, we actually, before you open, just make sure you have the right sink. You know, the sinks are in place, the privacy pieces that the, the regs say you have to have are in place so that you aren't making any mistakes. So when we come to do an unannounced visit, you can, you know, you at least get all the guidance that we could possibly give you so that you can meet the rules that are set in place for your profession and for your establishment. Um, hey, yeah, Leslie, go ahead. Go Leslie, ahead. I'm sorry. Um, you know, I, I, one quick shameless plug for a new program we started that you're aware of because it really is a good kind of segue from what the commissioner had mentioned. So we thought a lot about this, right? And and the commissioner both. Um, Layla and Jimmy do such a great job in, in that process of, again, protecting the public through inspections and, and all the due diligence that they need to do. But we thought about this a lot, about what, what more we can do for these businesses. Again, a lot of them who are hit particularly hard during the pandemic. So we came up with, uh, we, we started a program last month. We launched this program at Ocabra, really um, uh, intending to celebrate um, a lot of the businesses that we license and we're, we're uh, visiting these establishments, whether it's a, a hair salon, cosmetology hair salon, um, a, um, a CPA firm, uh, an electrical company and, and so on. Um, and we're really taking a, an opportunity to recognize them again, celebrate their business and say, thank you. Thank you for being a great licensee. Thank you for being a great um, business. Uh, for all these years for, uh, you know, doing the right thing, um, for running your business, uh, protecting your public uh, simultaneously, and, and just being a good licensee, being a, being a shining example, like the gold standard of what a licensee should be, being a leader in the community and, uh, and all that. And we thought about that and we said, you know, when, when government comes to visit you, it's usually because of a lot of things that the commissioner said uh, moments ago, which is, you know, a compliance check and inspection and all those things that are very necessary, a, a necessary part of this process to protect the public and just to keep them um, in business. But um, what we're doing is something entirely different and, and uh, you know, government coming knocking on your door, um, not for that reason, but um, again, to celebrate what they've, what they've accomplished and to try to give them a little attention and recognition, especially at a time where they, I think they need it the most. So. See, this is so great that you mentioned it because you stole my thunder as usual, and I love it um, because I was going to ask you about that and, and and basically celebrate you and this agency to say it is so important now more than ever that there is not this top heavy feeling that there is a simpatico relationship, if you will, between um, the government and the business community and just you showing up and 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 having those relationships building relationships building trust um having people ask questions that maybe they're they now that they feel that there's someone in their business um from the agency that they can actually talk to them about some of their challenges and you're now you're on ground zero you're hearing information from businesses you're hearing what their struggles are or their successes and i think you're going to find that people so appreciate this i mean whether you're going to attleboro 
you know, Pittsfield, Clinton, or, you know, Marblehead or Beverly, hello, right? Or, oh, Cape Ann, Gloucester, right? Um, it, it's so important that you are doing this because it makes people feel good and the world is just filled with so uncertain so much uncertainty and negativity that this is one small positive change that you could make from a government agency I, I think it's critical actually and i i would hope that others would uh follow your lead quite frankly because the chambers of commerce that's what we do we're supposed to be going into the businesses we're supposed to be celebrating successes helping them with their challenges that's what ribbon cutting is about that's what business after hours are about so it's very similar in that sense so i get it and i applaud you for it i think it's critical well we'll be coming to beverly soon um so we'll we'll uh, be in touch but one i'm gonna let i'm gonna toss it back to to jimmy and layla but one quick one quick um uh, additional scam I, I want to make sure that uh, our listeners are aware of. You know, everybody has at this point hopefully gotten at least one vaccine or vaccination, if not both doses. But please um, be careful. I think it's just fitting because we're we're kind of in this um, still in this kind of uh, end of the pandemic, end of the state of emergency time time period here. So the, the vaccine scams, uh, all things vaccine related have been, uh, vaccine scam related have been, uh, you know, there's been a proliferation of, of those over the past several months uh, as, as folks know. But one that is uh, top of mind right now is uh, the COVID-19 vaccine, vaccine survey scam. So please be aware of this one. Um, none of the companies right now um, Moderna, Pfizer, J and J. None of the companies are doing this survey, are doing any kind of survey like this. So, if you if you are uh, contacted uh, again by uh, what 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 appears to be one of these companies trying to conduct a survey scam, please beware. Again, it is just a scam and a just just another phishing attempt to obtain your personal information. None of the, none of the companies are doing a survey, so. Um, as soon as you see this, just tune out, call, hang up, text, do not read it, do not click on a live link, emails, delete. Just please be aware, please be extra vigilant during this time. Again, what everybody's kind of, you know, excited about, um, about um, the end of the pandemic and this next phase of things with the, um, you know, the end of the state emergency here in the Commonwealth. Uh, and again, finally, um, one last thing, you know, be careful not to post your um, vaccine cards as well. You know, that has a lot of personal information on there. So, um, you know, block out all that, all that information, the, 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 the manufacturer, the date, um, all, all that, all that information you don't want shared online. So do what you can to protect that personal information. So. Um, no, that's, uh, listen, you mentioned three scams that are really critical, the vaccine scam, the Venmo scam, which I'm on Venmo too. So, I mean, we all, a lot of people are, I didn't even think about that. And um, the calls from the government, of course, which we've all been about to be arrested at our front door. We all know those. And and those are critical. Those are huge for people. Um, I wanted to ask Jim and Layla, um, one of the things I've been so impressed with uh, from our state <laughs> uh, specifically is we're really good at following rules. And are you surprised you find that? I know Layla, you had mentioned, I think you said about 90%, I think it was Layla, said about 90% of your businesses that you're licensing that they really do follow the rules or maybe it was you, Jim. But I mean, are you surprised by that? Like we're actually real, we fall right in line. I'm not, I think most people want to have a set of rules to follow. Um, again, as a licensed attorney, we, you know, I have a set of rules that I need to follow, make sure that I don't, even when I was in the private practice, uh, it, it, I have family members who ask me about, you know, doing a will or a trust with them. I'm like, no way, that's malpractice. I have no idea. I took one class in law school. I can't do your will. <laughs> so yeah, I think I, I am not surprised by that. But unfortunately, as we all know, we need rules in place for those bad actors um, to understand and have consumers have a way to hold those bad actors accountable. Um, and, and, there, and it goes back to, you know, are we over-regulated? Absolutely not. I mean, you think about an electrician or a plumber, these are, you know, electricians deal with light, heat, and power. They're very, it's dangerous. Plumbers deal with potable water and non-potable water. 
things that we, you know, in our how our in our homes that we drink, um, you know, across the board, we have health boards with rules set up so that you're not if you're going to somebody who's a licensed mental health clinician or a social worker, it's not just somebody that didn't get the training, the education, and the, you know, are following the the right rules to be able to then help with you, you know, your mind and your body. So to me, rules are set up because most of the time people follow them and follow them well, but unfortunately we need them for that consumer protection piece for, for those bad actors that like to sort of perpetrate and scam people in, in the best, in the way that they know how, which is trying to skirt around all those rules as well. So. Jim, do you have a comment on that? Well, what Commissioner D'Amelio just said is, is correct. Uh, and I, I truly feel that we're very lucky in this Commonwealth. Uh, you know, I, I think our biggest part is that we work on education. Uh, I think we work to educate consumers. We educate businesses on what rules and regulations are there for. Um, I will say, you know, when we let's, let's look at a gas station real quickly. Um, they want to make sure that their devices that they're selling that fuel that they're not giving away or they're not, you know, taking from consumers. They want to make sure that it's a fair, equitable transaction. Um, and I think when having rules, regulations in place gives them the guidance and the guidelines that they need to be able to follow. Um, and I think we're very lucky in the Commonwealth because uh, we, we've got some, we've got good people that are looking, looking to help people. Um, I, when you mentioned consumers earlier, I consider consumers to be one of my biggest allies. Uh, it, it's like another set of eyes in a business um, because if they see something that's not, uh, that doesn't look right to them, they, they have no problem letting us know, can you please check this out? Can you have someone look into this? And nine out of 10 times, Leslie, they, they've found something that is not right uh, that has helped us to solve problems. So if they, if a consumer has an issue, um, they can contact you directly, but all of yes. your offices? Yes, they can. they can. They can contact us either via the phone or they can send us a, um, an email or, or an email complaint. Um, they can reach out to me. Seven, my, my email and phone ring seven days a week sometimes. Uh, not that we're always looking to be on Sunday being on call, but you know what, we're here to help. We're here to make sure that consumers and businesses are treated fairly, uh, and we're always going to be there for them. I have to tell you, we just got a, a, a question for the chat. We don't have a lot of time left. We just got a couple of minutes, but I'm going to read this quick. Um, item pricing, the adoption of self-scanners in food stores has, has been successful. Why not get rid of the annual waiver sign-up process and allow small stores with limited resources an easier path to embrace the new technology and get away from price stickers? Did you get all that? I did. And, okay. and in short, um, a lot of these small businesses have the opportunity uh, to apply uh, for the scan a waiver program. Um, you know, it, it goes by the square footage of the store uh, on what they will need for equipment. Uh, but it doesn't say that a store that is under 5,000 square feet cannot be part of this program. Um, it is just, it, it's a little bit different than item pricing, uh, the scan and waiver program, but it, it, it also comes with a little bit stricter adherences because now a business is coming to us and saying, Leslie, that uh, we want to be part of this program and we understand that we need to be on our game as, a, as that business and make sure that our pricing is extremely accurate, uh, it's transparent, that a consumer when they pick up an item, they know what they're paying for. That is the main objective and all businesses are, are able to all join that. Did you ever get it wrong? Do I ever get it wrong? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we do, but you know what? We're always looking to work I mean, on What happens if you screw up? What happens if you're having a bad day? Seriously, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll be the first one to always say to someone, Leslie, I am human, I've made a mistake. What can we do to rectify that problem? Love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Listen, we have to wrap up. Joe, how about some last minute comments from all of you? Uh, any closing remarks? And just know I am so grateful for everyone who's been on the call and, and for all of your time today. 
Uh, real, real, real quick one. We, we, you know, I'm going to use my my time. Um, we we haven't had a chance to really talk about you know something that affects businesses um, across the Commonwealth certainly and, and Beverly and throughout the North Shore. So, you know, cyber crime, cyber attacks. Again, as if, as if businesses didn't have to worry about everything under the sun, and now you know even smaller businesses have to worry worry about this technology, even uh, you know, everybody um, uses systems and it's just uh, everybody's vulnerable. So just last week, the mass, you know, the steamship authority yes. had a, a ransomware attack. And, um, you know, so what, what can companies do? Uh, again, there's a lot of people that know a lot more about the technology than I do, but, you know, they have to use a firewall for the internet connection, install and use regularly uh, updating uh, anti-malware, antivirus and anti-spyware software on every computer in the organization, downloading and installing um, software updates um, when available. And again, you have to report crime, all crime, fraud and, and, uh, and scams, especially cyber crime. And the FBI has a great um, uh, cyber crime, uh, actually, division, the uh, cyber, the, the Internet Crime Complaint Center, IC3, at FBI.gov. Um, contact uh, the FBI. And then you can also contact your, your local FBI field office here in Boston, which is actually in Chelsea. But go to FBI.gov and you can find all inf that information there. But basically, um, you know, we're so thrilled to be here again. Thank you, Leslie. We feel that conversations, you know, robust conversations like this are a great way to stay connected to our local business community. Um, we know that you're all very busy and we appreciate you taking the time to participate in tonight, today's webinar. Uh, I just want to leave you with this. Don't forget to protect yourself, your businesses and your customers. Stay vigilant. Don't let your guard down for one second. Stay one step ahead of the fraudsters, scammers, and criminals. And remember, we're all in this together. Don't hesitate to call us, uh, our terrific agency heads here today. Um, we are accessible. We're available. We want to be partners. I love what Jimmy said about, the, you know, we're uh, consumers, customers are like partners. And again, the way Layla runs her organization, we want to be there to help businesses. We're not punitive. We are partners with them. We want to help them in their business, serve their customers, uh, and, and so that they can do what they do best. They can make a living for their family, serve their communities, and do what it is that they do best. And we do not want to, um, you know, we don't we, do, we don't want to interfere with that. We want to we want to support them and uh, and be there for them. So thank you again so much. Thank you again so much, and that was excellent. I'm so grateful. Any last minute quick thoughts from Jim? Or I would just, I would dovetail to say um, public is our partner here. So please engage if there is a practice that's happening in the regulatory scheme that, that as a business owner or a licensee you think in practice doesn't work, please engage with the board, your board of registration or with the program. Let us know and be part of the solution and offer, you know, sort of what the alternatives could be. Because again, we, I can't pretend to know 39 different professions and all of the intricacies and nuances. And so I think if we can just keep talking and being engaged, it really can help the Commonwealth. Very grateful, Jim. And just to feed off of what uh, Commissioner D'Amelio had just said is that, you know, we, we at the Division of Standards feel the same way. We are here to help. Uh, we are still redefining and we look at every year as we go through our licensing process, what can we do better in the new online process to streamline, uh, make things work and be a little bit more customer friendly. Uh, not every day we're, we're going to satisfy every person, uh, but if we can address their concerns, complaints, um, I think we're on the right path. Ed, I can't wait to see you in Beverly. And Jim and Layla, I can't thank you enough for also being part of this. This is my first experience with uh, your departments and agencies. And I'm, again, just a wealth of knowledge. I, it makes me want to learn more about weights and measures and standards and all of this. I, I, I'm really naturally curious about it. Um, and it's so important for our business communities throughout Massachusetts and the Commonwealth. So I'm very grateful for your time today and for everyone behind the scenes who made this happen. So thank you, everyone, and I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks, Leslie. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Emory. Thank you, guys.